everyone to the celebration of the liturgy of the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and ask our Heavenly Father for his forgiveness. You were sent to heal a contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, Lord, mercy. have mercy. You were sent to heal sinners and Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to our everlasting life. Amen. Amen. unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In today's first reading, the first part is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, written when the Jewish people were exiled in Babylon. This section is often referred to as the book of comfort because of the encouragement that it gives. And today's passage is a glorious final to the Book of Comfort. Poor people are being invited to a sumptuous banquet. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive rain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
And our second reading concludes the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. This chapter reflects on the salvation brought about God in and through Jesus. And Paul concludes this chapter with a jubilant hymn that celebrates the love of God expressed in Christ. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone. What can truly satisfy our deepest hunger and our longing in our life? Wherever Jesus went, multitudes of people gathered to meet him. People from every part of society, rich and poor, professionals, laborers, and even social outcasts and pagans. What drew them to Jesus? Were they simply curious and looking for a miracle? Many were drawn to Jesus because they had a hunger in life, something that was not being satisfied in the traditional Jewish religion of the time. 
Jesus' message of God's kingdom and the signs and wonders he performed stirred fresh hope in them and an expectation that God was going to act in a beautiful new way and set their people free from sin and oppression and to bring them the blessings of the kingdom. They have always sought that in their life. Foreign occupiers came in constantly and now the Romans were there and they were looking really for a political messiah. But Jesus never really disappointed those who earnestly sought him out. We see a marvelous example of this when our Lord and his 12 disciples got into a boat and they were looking for a quiet place to get away from everything along the Sea of Galilee. Only to discover a few thousand people had already gathered in anticipation of their arrival. Did our Lord's disciples resent this intrusion? on their plan to rest for a while? Certainly our Lord didn't. He welcomed them with open arms, even though it was a great surprise to all of them. His compassion showed the depths of God's love and care for his people. And our Lord spoke the word of God and strengthened their faith and healed many who were sick. And then as evening approached, the disciples wanted our Lord, well, send these people away. There's too many of them. Now remember, there's no buses. They came on foot. They were carrying stretchers, uh, people walking vast distances. What are we going to do with all of these people? So our Lord said, feed them yourselves. Why did Jesus expect his disciples what seemed to be very impossible to do, to feed such a large and hungry crowd and a sick crowd? with no provisions really in sight. Our Lord very likely wanted to test their faith and give them a sign of God's divine intervention and favor for his people. Our Lord took what little they had, five loaves and two fish, and giving thanks to his heavenly Father, he distributed to all until they were satisfied of their physical hunger. Twelve baskets full of fish and loaves were left over, and that showed God's over-generosity of his gifts to us, the gifts that bring us blessings, healing, and strength, and refreshment in our life. Our Lord's feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle recorded in all four gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and St. John expounds on it in chapter 6, the whole chapter 6 of his gospel. So what is really the significance of this miracle? The miracle of feeding such a great multitude really recalled a miraculous provision of manna in the wilderness in the desert by Moses under his leadership. The daily provision of food for the people of Israel for their 40 years of journeying in a barren wilderness foreshadowed, foreshadowed the true heavenly bread which Jesus would pass on to his disciples later in the Passover meal on the eve of his sacrifice on the cross. Jesus makes a claim that only God can make. He is the true bread of heaven that can satisfy our deepest hunger that we experience in our lives. The miracle of the multiplication of the loaves when Jesus said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them for his disciples also to feed the multitude is a sign that prefigures the superabundance of the unique bread of the Eucharist, our Lord's Supper, which sustains us in our earthly journey. The feeding of the 5,000 shows the remarkable generosity of God and his great kindness towards us. When God gives, he always gives abundantly. He gives more than we need for ourselves, that we may have something to share with others, especially those who lack what they need. God takes the little what we have, multiplies it for the good of others. So do we really trust in God's provision for us? And do we freely share our gifts with others, especially those who are in need? And I just ask you in your homes if you would bow yourself. Heads in prayer, please. And Lord Jesus Christ, you satisfy the deepest longings of our heart. You feed us with the finest wheat. 
Fill me with gratitude for your blessings and give me a generous heart that I may freely share with others what you have given to me. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope this day finds all of you in good health and let us continue to pray that we get through this pandemic that one day we may joyfully, all of us, come together in the church uh, to celebrate the Eucharist and the breaking of the bread. God bless you. And we profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions before our loving Father. That our church leaders may live in a way that will draw all to believe in Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That our military, police, firefighters, and first responders may receive the support of the community as they work together to bring peace and stability to the world. We pray to the Lord, and Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer that those who are suffering from illness or despair may find relief and comfort in the mercy of God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That each of us may have confidence in knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our parish community may grow in faith and respect for all believers we pray to the Lord, and Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our beloved deceased may forever enjoy the abundant happiness of heaven. We pray in particular for the recent deceased of Holy Family Parish and for whom this Mass is intended, John Vaughn Sr. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for those needs that we hold close to our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for peace and stability in our country, and we pray for all of our law enforcement officers, for our first responders, for those who work in hospitals, that we may give them due honor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray to our intercessor in heaven for the safety and stability of our country, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the malice and snares of the devil. Restrain him, O God, we humbly pray. And you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by God's divine power, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is our loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, and for our good and good of all this holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting this offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, and we pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the glory of the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice, and we all acclaim. we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, the Church of Cleveland, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Taught by our Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you, look not in our sins, but look upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we give the appropriate sign of peace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death gave life to the world, and free us by this your most holy body and blood from all of our sins and from every evil. And keep us always faithful to your teachings, and Lord, never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed.
you for continued prayers, understanding, and support during these difficult times. We appreciate all you do for the parish, and we pray for good health and safety for everyone. Saturday confessions remain suspended. Private confessions are available by appointment. All parish activities remain suspended until further notice. We will continue to provide a recording of the 6 p.m. Vigil Mass on the website. Please refer to our website for ongoing updates. Eucharistic Adoration has resumed on Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the church unless a funeral is scheduled. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption, and we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May his blessing come upon you, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And thanks, thanks be to God. God.